And it works. It's taken me most of the day um, to get the video going and we finally have it here at 7.30 in the evening on Monday, August 1st. We've made it into, what is this, the eighth month of the year? We've only got four more months to go. Um, and then it's a new year. Can't believe we've made it thus far. But it's great to be with you this day as we recap Sunday, July 31st. Um, yesterday was Hymn Sing Sunday. It was a great, great day. I loved that everybody called out hymns for different parts of the service. It was phenomenal, and it was a great experience uh, to be able to share that with everyone. As well, it was um, uh, being the fifth Sunday was a Sunday that we offered uh, healing, anointing with healing uh, for healing, and it was a great time to be able to offer that um, with you, dear members, after church. We had a number of prayers yesterday. Um, we pray for the people in the Philippines after a devastating earthquake. We pray for wildfires in California and in Montana. The winds have shifted, unfortunately, and what was uh, saving some houses in Montana, now the fire is moving rapidly towards um, those houses. And so we pray for those people that are evacuating. We give thanks that they're able to evacuate and leave, um, but we grieve as well as the loss of homes. Um, and the loss of creation, but out of the ashes, usually, um, out of the ashes, not usually, but always comes something glorious. Ask any forest uh, person that does forest work, uh, they'll tell you after a fire, there is beauty that comes um, after a fire. Um, there was a deadly stabbing in at the, at the Apple River here in Wisconsin on Saturday, and we pray for the family that grieves the loss of life as well as the other victims in that stabbing. Um, and then we lift up those people in Kentucky at the loss of life from flooding and those that are dealing with the flooding. Um, we just pray for those people. And we continue to lift up our own church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, as we prepare to go into General Assembly together um, into our convention and meet as Lutherans and make decisions. Um, and so we pray for the people from the East Central Synod, for our bishop and the the, the members, uh, pastors and lay people that will be going to Ohio to be a part of that convention. And I invite you to lift up your own prayers and make your intentions, your, your prayers of thanksgiving or concern a part of our prayers um, this week. And so we'll begin, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and using a selection of verses. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity, says the teacher. I, the teacher, when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me. And who knows whether they will be foolish or wise, yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which pain they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain. And their work is a vexation, even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The Word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. And our psalm this week is Psalm 49. Hear this, all you peoples, give ear all who dwell in the world, you of high degree and low, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb and set forth my riddle upon the harp. Why should I be afraid in evil days when the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me? The wickedness of those who put their trust in their own prowess and boast of their great riches. One can never redeem another or give to God the ransom for another's life. For the ransom of a life is so great that there would never be enough to pay it in order to live forever and ever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation, though they had named lands after themselves. Even though honored, they cannot live forever. They are like the beasts that perish. And a reading from Colossians chapter 3. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil, desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel this week is from St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear ones, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Creator, and Jesus Christ, who helps us to die a death to the flesh, and close us with glory. Amen. So I'm going to give you a bit of a trigger warning at the onset of our message today. You are about to dive into the mind and the workings of your vicar, because this has been going through my head all week when I read Ecclesiastes. And so, how many of us are familiar with Carly Simon and her music? Maybe you already know where I am going with this. Um, but we hear in Ecclesiastes, Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. 
every time I hear this passage. I can't help but hear, you're so vain. You probably think this sermon's about you. Okay, so, you know, I fudge the words a little bit. It's, you probably think this song is about you. But, anybody else? Carly, Simon? Yes? No? It's okay if you didn't. I told you, this is the way my mind works, and this is where my mind went all week. Every time I would read that passage, I would just hear that song in the back of my mind. But you can file this magical moment under the file in your brains, the things that you never thought you would ever hear a minister sing in church. Something special for you this day. Today, though, I don't want to focus on Ecclesiastes. I want to look at our reading from Colossians. And it's this reading that has to do with one of our two sacraments. And so I'm going to read for you verses 9 to 11 and see if you can be thinking about that a bit. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with, with its practices and clothed yourself with, with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. So now for the $100,000 pyramid, here is what you have to figure out. What strips us of our old selves and yet clothes us in a whole new way? I'm going to hint, give you a hint, a few hints. It's one of two sacraments. And the one it is not is the Eucharist or Holy Communion. If you say baptism, you've now won the $100,000 pyramid. So you can go out and find somebody that has $100,000 and tell them you've won and ask them to give you the $100,000. Baptism. Baptism, as Martin Luther writes in the large catechism, is no human plaything. I love that. Baptism is no human plaything, but it is instituted by God. And Luther goes on to say, to be baptized in God's name is not to be baptized by human beings, but by God. And although it is performed by human hands, it is nevertheless truly God's own act. So what does this mean? Well, it means that when we were baptized, when we baptized children, God confirms God's calling of us as a child of God. It means that when we come forward to be confirmed, to affirm our baptism, we are affirming that we will continue to live a life worthy of the gospel. It means that when we leave our church buildings, no matter where they're located, here on North Slater Street, in any other place, that we will leave that building living into our baptismal promises. We will not lie about we, who we are. We will promote unity and care for all, and not hoard the blessings that God gives us for ourselves. Okay, but I know what you're asking. I know you're out there going, Vicar Matthew, what is or what are the baptismal promises? It's okay, I've got you here. And since yesterday was Congregational Choice Sunday, or Use Your Hymnal Sunday, I invited our congregation to use our hymnal. And so if you have one at home, I invite you to turn to page 236 in your hymnal. Uh, that's part of the affirmation for baptism. You can look at the um, baptismal liturgy. These are the same promises in those liturgies. And I want to be clear here for a moment. I did actually do some research, and I looked at my hymnals that I have on my shelf, and so I, the oldest one I have is from 1930, the Lutheran hymnal from 1930. So if you have been baptized or confirmed since at least 1930, these are the promises that would have been asked of you or your parents. These are the covenant promises that we agree to. The first is to live among God's faithful people. 
you know, we can see um, and experience God alone, whether out on a boat in the middle of the lake, in the woods, on the golf course, in the kitchen. But we are called into community. Everything that we do as Christians means that we will do it together in community. And so we are called to live together among God's faithful people, preaching and teaching and proclaiming together. Second, to hear the word of God and share the Lord's Supper. We come together in community, in Bible study, in small groups, to hear the word of God, to discern the word of God in scripture, and then at some point partake in the meal. For most of us, that meal is a weekly experience at church as we come and we share in the Holy Eucharist together, sharing in the body and blood of Christ, the very presence. Or it could be at a dinner table, sharing in that meal among friends and family, having prayed a prayer of blessing upon our meal and breaking bread together. God is present as we hear the word of God and eat together. To proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed. If we have been baptized into Christ, which most of us have been, then we are called to proclaim the gospel truthfully and to not weaponize it so that it becomes a weapon to promote disunity, to promote segregation or otherness. We are called into unity, into community together. And more than that proclamation of the gospel, though, we are called to simply live a Christian life, caring and loving our neighbors, making ourselves vulnerable, promoting the good of all people. And next, to serve all people following the example of Jesus. This is tricky. Jesus didn't stay in his hometown. Jesus didn't stay in Jerusalem and preach and teach in Jerusalem. The people there knew. They knew the gospel. Presumably, maybe not. Jesus went to the outside. Jesus went outside the wall where those that were diseased were cast were those women that had lost the husbands and they have nowhere to make money and so they are cast outside of the city, outside of the temple, and they are forced to beg to live. Jesus is found there. Jesus is found on the outside. Jesus is found preaching to the Samaritans at the well, even though they were not to communicate together. And so we are called to do the same thing. It's difficult work. Nobody wants to do that. How do you eat, drink, and be merry when you're called to go to the outside, to the sick and the dying, the destitute, those that are alone? You proclaim the word of God. And you share love with them. And finally, to strive for peace and justice in all the earth. We hear in Jesus' final hours on earth when one of the disciples takes his sword and strikes off the ear of a high priest. And Jesus takes that sword and says, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Violence, anger, idolatry, as we hear in our readings. That's not striving for peace and justice. That's striving for ourselves. And in our baptismal calling, we are called. We have affirmed when we are when we affirm our baptism that we will strive for peace and justice in all of the world. Eugene Peterson has an interesting translation, one that I think makes um, a little bit easier to hear um, in this message uh, Bible translation that he has. And so this 
passage from Colossians maybe clears it up a little bit in the Message Bible. Mr. Peterson translates, don't, don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. Now, now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom-made by the Creator with God's label on it. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious or irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. Why has the church gotten such a bad name, especially as of late? It's because we are really good at claiming to live into our new baptismal identity. We are really good at claiming this is what we believe. We confirm these promises when we get to be young adults. We claim to live in that covenant with God, and then we go out of our buildings, of our place of worship, and we lie. Idolatries take over our lives. Anger towards others takes over our lives. Anxiety takes over our lives. We're afraid. We are afraid to be the church. We weaponize God's word. We cling to the weapon of the sword instead of the promise that we hear in the Gospels. It's difficult to hear. We hoard for ourselves. We are afraid to trust God. We are afraid to give even just a little bit of what we have. But let's be honest. We like financial security. Don't we? Yesterday I had the congregation raise hands, and at first nobody raised. But then we started to admit we want to know that we're going to have food to eat, clothing to wear, a roof over our heads. It's scary to think about where our next meal could come from, where we might end up having to live. But you know what? God isn't asking us to give up everything. God wasn't asking the the farmer, the landowner, to give up all he had. God was saying, just look at the person next to you. Look outside of your property. Look into your community and just give a little. And you know what? When we give, it isn't about ourselves. Maybe we can only give a dollar. But do you know what? When we come together as community, as we are called to do, when we live into that baptismal covenant, covenant, and we come together as God's people, and if we have 40 people and we each give a dollar, that could mean a day's worth of food for somebody in our community, and you only had to give a dollar. There were times where I had no idea how we were going to eat for two weeks after paying bills. 
how would we feed our young family? And yet, we would be challenged to help out at Christmas or Easter time. And somehow, the Lord still provided, even when we helped others. When we had no idea how we were even going to get our children what they needed, we were still pushed to help others. But you know what? We weren't doing it alone. We were doing it in community. And somehow God provided. Somehow we ended up making it happen. It wasn't always easy. There were questions. What was going to, how are we going to get bread? How are we going to do this? But you know what? Miraculously, God provided. That's what we are called to do. When we clothe ourselves with our new life, when we take that ill-fitting clothing of humanness and we put it into the fire and we allow that beautiful clothes of Gucci God, you know, the Gucci God label to be put on, we're called to give even just a little of what God has blessed us with. Because we're not doing this alone. This isn't just me, myself, and I living out this ministry. This is all of us together in community as baptized believers doing this. Promoting peace and justice. Promoting the word of God and the holy meal. Praying together. Staying together. I'm reminded as we wind down this message time of a poem by Frances Havergal. And she writes, Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. When we affirm our baptism, we consecrate ourselves to the Lord. And it wasn't just a time 20 years ago, two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, but it is each and every time that we come to that font. Even if you think, well, I'm not going to touch that water, or there's no water in the font, I don't have to worry about it. Every time we come to that font, each and every day of our lives, we are renewing that covenant. And we are consecrating ourselves into the community of faith, the body of Christ. Taking off the old self, getting rid of the sin and the lies in the world, and we say that we are going to be clothed with God, consecrate ourselves, and live a life of faith worthy of the gospel. It's not an easy task. We can't do it alone. But together, we can. One day at a time. One dollar at a time. One lifetime at a time. And we promote God's message to the world. And we go out in faith. And we do the deeds of the gospel, proclaiming God's message and sharing a meal together. Dear ones, thank you for being in this community, for reminding one another that we don't do this alone, that in our clothing of the baptismal covenant, we are made one together in Christ. And in this community, in this baptism community, God blesses us, and with those blessings, we go out into the world and bless the world, a world in need, in deep need of blessing. Dear ones, thanks be to God for you and your blessings. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love this day. 
Let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians and Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who have and, and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are the source of all life. Where creation grow, cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. We pray for those in the Philippines after the earthquake there, and we pray for those dealing with the devastating wildfires in California and Montana. We pray for the safety of all people, for all emergency responders. We pray for those who have lost their lives, who have lost their homes in the severe, deadly floodings in Kentucky. Bless farmers and ranchers and distributors and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all of its inhabitants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Oh God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of the nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement and rest and renewal. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress, and we pray for your continued blessings and of healing upon Kim and Les. Renew us all at your table of mercy. Merciful God, hear our prayer. O God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committee, committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry here in this place in Coloma, Wisconsin. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God of calling, you call us into vocations each and every day. And this week in the East Central Synod of Wisconsin, we will celebrate another calling into the priesthood, into the vocation of a minister of word and sacrament. And we give thanks for Caroline and her family for the calling that she has received, and we pray for blessings poured out upon her this Wednesday as she is ordained in the East Central Synod of Wisconsin. Bless her ministry and the congregations that she serves. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God of music, this week we give you thanks for musicians, for people like J.S. Bach and George Frederick Handel, and even our musicians here at church, as he prepares to celebrate 50 years of glorious ministry here at Prince of Peace. We give thanks for Ken's ministry. And we pray for those musicians that help in time of need. We lift them up and give them thanks for their ministry here as well. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Bring your word, eternal God, your creation sprang forth, and we were given the breath of life. By your word, eternal God, death is overcome, Christ is raised from the tomb, and we are given new life in the power of your Spirit. May we boldly proclaim this good news in our words and our deeds, rejoicing always in your powerful presence. Direct the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America by your word, as this church prepares to gather in assembly. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are the resurrection. We give you thanks for all of your saints. Inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love toward you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And dear ones, receive this blessing on your week. The God of peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and comfort you, and show you the path of life, this day and always. Amen. Dear ones, go in peace, living into your baptismal promises, and love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>